good morning to you i am r narayanan today we are taking up union and its territories we have already seen what is meant by constitution what are the various kinds of constitution what are the characteristics of federal constitution and what are the salient features of indian constitution in the last class we have seen preamble today we are taking up union and its territories part 1 articles 1 to 4 important part 1 articles 1 to 4 i would like to request you that as and when we explain kindly take down because you have the constitution you can just make a reference and all explanation you can scribble down so that you remember what we have discussed so article 1 says india that is bharat shall be union of states number 1 the states and territories are specified in first schedule number 2 the territory of india comprises territories of the state union territories and such other territories as may be acquired this is what article 1 says so india is union of states remember it is not united states nor it is a federation even though the country is a federation with a strong center the word federation has not been used instead we have used only union it has two distinct advantages the first advantage is the constitution makes it clear that the union is not as a result of any agreement among the units and the another aspect which i emphasize is that the states have no right to cede away from the union the two points you should remember instead of using federation we have specifically used union because the states have no right to cede away and the composition of the federation is not as a result of any agreement among the states unlike usa thirdly the name of india is bharat remember in the constant assembly there were some members who insisted that we should use the traditional name of bharat and others wanted to use the modern term of india so obviously we have taken a middle path so both the nam- names have been used the states and the territories are given in the first schedule remember union of india is different from territories of india when we talk of union of india we talk only about the union and the states both derive their powers from the constitution the source is constitution in schedule 7 as we have already seen both executive power and legislative power on the other hand the territory of india includes the territories of the states number 1 union territories number 2 and also the territories which may be acquired by the union at any time remember three categories one is states second is union territories third any other ter- territory which may be acquired by the government of india in due course of time so at present we have 28 states and 8 union territories 
all the states and union territories of jnk puducherry and the nct of delhi have elected legislatures and the remaining five uts are directly ruled by the center second point is now the question is whether the country can acquire any territory remember the acquisition of the territory new territory is an attribute of the sovereign function of the state there is no legislation needed the mode of acquisition may be gift subjugation conquest or acquisition such territories will be subsequently included under union territory then of course converted into the state now article 2 deals with admission or establishment of a new state remember constitution gives full powers to the parliament to admit a new state or to establish a new state remember only on such terms and conditions as the parliament decides these words are very cru- crucial admission of a state establishment of a state and on such conditions and terms as the parliament decides these three terms are very important admission of a new state means admission of a state which is already existing in the country example sikkim establishment of a state means formation and admission of a state which is not existing you create so the difference you should remember that is one is a state which is already existing i have told you the example of sikkim establishment of state means formation and admission of a state which is not existing number 1 remember there is no provision in the constitution which gives the right to the new state after admission into the union to claim any equality because the admission or establishment is on such terms and conditions as prescribed by the parliament this is very important we have taken sikkim we have taken puducherry we have taken goa the daman dew these states have been admitted our union territories have been admitted on such terms and conditions as the parliament decides for example let us say sikkim cannot say that it has only one representative in rajya sabha whereas uttar pradesh has got 31 similarly understand appreciate once it is admitted no state can cede away from the union so article 2 article 3 provides the formation the procedure for formation of a new state and also alteration of the area boundary territory and the name of the existing state a state can be formed by separation of a territory from any state or by amalgamating two or more states or by uniting any part of the state etc or union territory under this the parliament has absolute powers to increase or decrease the area and also change the name of the state or union territory 
constitution empowers the parliament fully to alter the territory or change the name or establish a state remember most importantly without the consent of the affected state this can be done by passing a law by parliament by simple majority remember most important by simple majority what is simple majority subject to quorum number of members present divided by 2 plus 1 what is quorum quorum is the requirement of minimum number of members for making a transaction valid very simple in lok sabha and rajya sabha let us say in lok sabha the total number of members let us say it is 545 or 543 including speaker so the minimum requirement is 10% that is 55 members should be present for making a transaction valid remember as far as quorum is concerned it is not the duty of the speaker to oversee how many members are present instead it is the duty of the opposition to see that the minimum quorum is present or not if the minimum number of members are not present they will they will ask the speaker they will bring this to the notice of the speaker and on his or her instance the quorum bell will be rung and the members wherever they are they should rush to the house this is the procedure so again simple majority means subject to quorum number of members present divided by 2 plus 1 for example let us say there are 60 members quorum is 55 there are 60 members and and divided by 2 30 plus 1 31 so if 31 members pass the bill then it is the bill becomes an act after assented by the president of india so in other words it can be passed by simple majority now for introduction of this legislative proposal for reorganization of the state or changing the name of the state or changing the territory of the state or creation of a state or abolition of the state two conditions are to be satisfied most importantly remember the bill can be introduced in either house of parliament either house means it can be introduced in lok sabha or it can be introduced in rajya sabha two conditions are to be satisfied that is number 1 the bill cannot be introduced in either house without the recommendation of the president of india in other words except on the recommendation of president of india the bill cannot be introduced in either house of parliament then president has a duty what is the duty cast upon him if the bill affects the area boundary or name of the state the president before recommending the bill for introduction he should refer the bill to the concerned state legislature for its views within such a stipulated time remember even if the state legislature does not express its views within the allocated time or even if the state legislature has expressed opposing views even then the president of india can recommend the introduction of the bill and the parliament is not bound by the views expressed by the affected state legislature and the bill can be introduced and passed remember the presidential recommendation is done by the president on the advice of the council of ministers again 
on the advice of the council the president is not an individual opinion it is on the advice of the council of ministers as i have already told under article 74 of the constitution under article 74 of the constitution as you know president cannot act contrary to the advice of the council of ministers or without the advice of the council of ministers whatever council of ministers is, says it is binding on the president if he disagrees he, a maximum he can refer the advice for reconsideration in the event of such advice being reconsidered and tendered again that reconsidered advice is binding on the president of india remember and as i said the passage of the bill is by simple majority most important remember very important these amendments are not to be treated as amendments for the purpose of article 368 for the purpose of article 368 these amendments quote they, they are not amendments these amendments quote are not to be treated as amendments for the purpose of article 368 note that this amendment modifies schedule 1 and schedule 4 allocation of seats in rajya sabha both the schedules of constitution are changed in spite of it these amendments are not to be treated as amendments for the purpose of article 368 so in natural remember the very existence of the state its name its territory its territorial integrity is totally dependent on the will of the union that is why it is said that india is an indestructible union with the destructible states as i told you one of the salient features of indian constitution is india is a indestructible union which cannot be destroyed union cannot be destroyed with destructible states states can be destroyed so this is the most important procedure for amending the constitution for changing the name of the state changing the boundary of the state changing the territory of the state creation of a new state and an amalgamation of the state etc so article 2 and 3 has been made very flexible for obvious reasons reasons we will discuss in a different time now third point is cession of territory cession means c e w s i o n that is parting away one territory to other to other place other state or whatever it is so remember the parliament empowers article 3 empowers the parliament as i told you to establish the it to establish the state and also it empowers to diminish the area of any state remember the diminishment or decrease can occur in two ways number one where a part of territory of a state is withdrawn and added to another state okay that is you take some area of tamil nadu and give to the kerala this is number 1 one way another is where a part of the territory of state or union territory is taken out and given to a foreign country remember see both the difference one is you take some pro, uh, some area or territory and give it to another state within the union another is you take some territory and give it to a foreign state now the question is whether item 2 second serial second item is possible that is giving away to a foreign state is possible remember this question came before supreme court in a reference made by president of india under article 143 of the constitution that is advisory jurisdiction of the constitution the case is very simple India and Pakistan entered into an agreement in 1958 for resolving a border dispute the agreement is number 1 transfer of 50 percentage of perubari area to pakistan in exchange of kuch bihar area the total area to be given to pakistan was only 9 square miles 
remember we have taken the kuch bihar area when and when it, when the our area that is perubari area is to be transferred then there was a large agitation all post offices railway stations everything was we have been destroyed at this stage at the instance of central government naturally president of india president of india intervened and referred the matter to the supreme court under article 143 advisory jurisdiction of the president of india okay what was the question asked two questions are asked number 1 whether any legislative action is required for implementing the agreement on perubari number 1 Number two, if so, whether a law of Parliament under Article Three is sufficient, or an amendment to the Constitution under Article Three Sixty Eight is required, these are all the two points raised by President of India before Supreme Court under Article One Hundred and Forty Three of the Constitution. Supreme Court said very clearly, Article Three deals with. only the internal adjustment of the territories of the constituent states because the area diminished under article 3 continues to be the area of the union of india so article 3 does not provide for ceding the territory to a foreign state accordingly the agreement can be implemented only after amending the constitution through article 368 supreme court also held that the ceding away the territory is an attribute of sovereign power of the state accordingly ninth amendment was enacted under article 368 so remember this is the union and its territories and as far as reorganization of state is concerned i will take it up in a separate lecture thank you